Hi, you can now use OpenAI's Codex and Clot Code directly in PineGrow. Codex and Clot Code are AI agents that we usually run like uh, separate programs from the terminal. And of course, we can continue to do that because PineGrow projects are simple HTML, CSS, JavaScript files on your hard disk. So any AI agent can easily edit these projects. But now with the latest PineGrow PineCone update, we can use these agents as AI providers. And there are two benefits of doing that. So the first one is that if you have an existing chat GPT subscription or cloud subscription, you get to use these agents for free. So it's no longer necessary to pay separately for API uh, calls. And the second benefit is these agents are a bit smarter than just uh, regular API calls because they, they are kind of aware of the whole project. They can access all files in the project and also edit them. So let, let's do that. And in this example, in this tutorial, we will uh, set up OpenAI Codex. It's more flexible than Cloud Code and it's becoming very popular. And in my experience, it also works very well. So anyway, let's go back. So, okay, I'll start from beginning. So you see all the steps. So here in the AI panel, open settings. And here we have open AI codex settings, not active at the moment. So click here and this opens the provider settings. So a couple of notices before, like, unfortunately, Codex is not yet fully supported on Windows. So if you are using Windows, I would say, uh, and you want to use the agent, go with Cloud Code. And hopefully OpenAI will soon, you know, sort this out so that um, Codex can run kind of natively on uh, Windows as well. So here we have to provide the codex uh, command line command and that's usually codex. And let's test the setup. And PineGrow cannot find the, the, the file. In that case, it's not a problem. We just need to be more specific. We need to provide like the full path and the easiest way to find it is go to command line and say which codex. And then just copy the full path and enter it here. We are um, leaving this enabled so that we see the thinking and any commands that are run by the agent. We could also add extra arguments here to specify how it works. I mean, th these are just like codex um, configuration arguments, not something specific to PineGrow. And by default, the agents are run with full permissions, which means they can edit all the files in your project and also execute commands. So it's really very, very good idea to use source control such as Git with any project. I mean, even if we are working on it uh, manually, but even more so when we are using AI and AI agents, because sometimes things can go wrong and the code, you know, can get messed up. So it's good that we can revert to whatever point in time we need. Okay, so let's do test setup now. Success, it works. Let's save it. Let me just hide to, to unclutter the interface. Here we have a new option, hide the provider. So this is useful for kind of cleaning up the list of available models. And then in PineGrow, you can define two active models. So one is quick and one is smart. And let's select a quick model. 
So here we go, codex SLI. And uh, here we see we have like GPT-5 with different reasoning efforts. And also we have the latest model, GPT-5 codex, again with uh, different reasoning models. So a good idea is to, you know, use quick model, maybe use GPT minimal. And then for smart model, use something more smart, like, I mean, with more, higher reasoning effort. So maybe GPT-5 high or GPT-5 medium. So let, let's go with medium in this case. Okay, save. Now we can start using all cool um, and smart AI features in PineGrow. And PineGrow will use the agent to fulfill our tasks. So for example, here I have a, a web page about a bakery shop. And again, you know, PineGrow AI assistant, it's not, you know, it's not just typing text and hoping for the best. So we have a lot of options to decide how to proceed in the best way. For example, we have an option to select action, like kind of how the AI will work. So in this case, I will use smart HTML editing for pages, for the whole page, because this action takes the whole page and then it knows how to edit HTML, specific HTML elements. So in this case, let's say we want to change the landing page and make it about surfing. Make the page about surfing and enter will start a new task. So now in the background, Pyngro is running Codex uh, program and communicating with it. And here we can see that now the agent is thinking about the task. And it's sometimes quite fun to read, you know, what goes in its uh, mind better than just waiting. And um, it takes a while because we have selected the medium model, which, which does uh, more thinking. And for complex tasks, that's quite, um, you know, I would say recommended because the result will be better. And you will see later this smart toggle, it's really useful because for simple tasks, we can just switch back to the quick model and um, that will be much quicker. So this is one drawback of using the agent compared to just uh, API calls. For example, you know, open AI uh, API, we could use GPT-5 there as well. So in my experience, agent is a bit slower because I don't know, it, it, it's thinking harder or it's using more context. Um, but for me personally, because I have chat GPT subscription, it really is a no brainer to use the agent because then I, I don't have any extra API costs. Um, and the agent works quite well. Plus I can switch between different agent models. So now the thinking is finished and the agent or the AI, Pangros AI assistant is now editing, you know, individual elements on the page. So we can't see the result yet. We see the result once all edits are uh, done. And this includes like editing specific elements or just changing attributes. Um, and that is, with smart pages mode. So that's really recommended if you have a smart model, like uh, all the latest ones from OpenAI and Anthropic are good. And you need to do changes that are kind of, you know, need to take the whole page into consideration. So, okay, let's see what happens. So the, it seems the texts are changed. Um, but still we have the pie images, 
probably not what we want. And the AI systems lets us simply uh, follow up on tasks and let's say change images as well. And enter will run the follow up, not a new task. And now the agent is syncing again and will I hopefully change the images. And how this works? So actually it's quite effective because the, the code of the whole page, like we are, when we are in this smart pages mode, is sent to the AI agent and then that is cached as input tokens. So when we do a follow-up, it's quite cost effective. So, okay, so what happens? So now uh, Pinerose AI Assistant also knows how to look up images, either images that are in the project, or it can also find uh, free images online on Unsplash. So all of that happens automatically. So now we have this, you know, nice landing page. Okay, just to give you a bit more, just a small overview. I won't really go into all the power of the Tangros AI Assistant. Um, that is a subject of other videos. But with Codex as AI provider, like all features work exactly like they would if we would use any other API provider. And now if I click here on smart, I can toggle between smart and quick model. So now I switched into quick and here we have a, a kind of collection of ready-made commands. So then let's do something simple. Design. Let's just say improve the design and let's see what will happen. And because we are using the quick model, there was almost no thinking and the output started immediately. And here we have like a suggestion of a better design for this title. So let me show you one more thing. So I'll undo because I like the original. And here we have also a new action when the agent is active. It's called agent chat. And here what happens, whatever you ask the agent to do is just pass directly to the agent. Normally Pinegrow would kind of send the, the code of the page of, or of the selected element to the agent and then process back the edited code. But if we use this, uh, this goes directly to the agent and the agent will also edit the code outside of Pinegrow more or less. And then Pinegrow will just notice that the file changed on disk and reload the changes. So when we use this, it's good to, of course, save the document before. And then we could ask it stuff, you know, like make sure that the navigation is up to date on all sub pages of the project or add a new page about, I don't know, you know, pricing. Basically what same like we would use the command line if we would run it um, in terminal. But it's just sometimes more convenient to do that from within Pinegrow. Yeah, until now our recommendation was to use Claude uh, Sonnet as the best model for when it comes to web design and, and creative web development. But now with this update, I would say if you have existing ChatGPT subscription or Claude, 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 Claude Code subscription, then using the agent as the AI provider is the way to go.